patient. We think we can actually model the cell, we can actually define the virtual cell models and eventually use all this knowledge for personalized medicine and also for accelerated drug development. How are multi-omnic approaches reshaping the way we understand and treat complex diseases? Joining me now is Professor Adil Madinoglu from King's College London to break it all down. Welcome. Thank you. So happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Great to pleasure to be here. Great. To start off, you're going to have to help me understand what human metabologenomics are and why it's key to understanding complex diseases. We are very much interested in understanding human physiology at health and different disease status. That's the reason that we actually generate extensive amount of multi-omics data, like different yeah. layer of biological information, uh, including genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics, and also uh, for studying the host and microbial interactions, metagenomics. Of course, after generating such information, like almost billion data points per individual, mm -hmm. we are uh, really interested in integrating this different layer of information and also interpreting this meaningful information. And that's what we call metabologenomics, which is actually okay. linking the metabolomics and the metabolism to genomics. Okay. And that is the area that we are working on. Can you share any recent breakthrough that your lab had treating metabolics or neurodegenerative diseases? For the neurological disease and for other mitochondrial dysfunction associated diseases, mm -hmm. we basically come up with a therapeutic strategy which we run successfully in a number of phase two studies. And we are running currently phase three study on Alzheimer's disease patients with 700 people. And this is uh, waiting actually a way of treating uh, or a way of developing novel therapeutic strategies for treatment, for effective treatment of the Alzheimer's disease patients. In another study, we basically under, uh, identify a number of novel drug targets for liver cancer, for fatty liver disease, for prostate cancer, okay. for muscle sarcopenia. And to take this further, we basically develop small molecules, mm -hmm. uh, which can actually be used for treating such subjects. And eventually, uh, we, are, we start preparing a number of phase one studies uh, during 2020, uh, by the end of 2025 and early 2026. And that's why we are very excited that all our uh, information, all our knowledge is now turning to real medicines, which can hopefully uh, effectively treat the patients. I know that you contributed to major global projects. One of them is Swedish Human Protein Atlas and also Human Cell Atlas. How are these shaping the future of personalized medicine? At the moment, like in order to actually develop the personalized treatment, we are very much interested in uh, understanding the personal differences, mm -hmm. again using multi data and uh, the technology that we generated, that they developed in uh, using AI and systems biology. And in the Human Protein Atlas back in 2000s, it has actually started for defining the molecular repertoires of the human body. And uh, in that context, uh, we have developed antibodies for, for uh, studying the presence and absence of individual protein coding genes, mm -hmm. the proteins, in specific cell types and tissues. And with that information, after uh, developing you know, hundreds of thousands of antibodies, we have now basically understood what is the presence and absence of specific protein in specific tissues. And later, uh, with the progress in the technology, we integrated all this information with the transcriptomics data. Mm -hmm. And again, with the, uh, uh, at the, with the transcriptomics level, we studied the molecular repertoires of every cell types and tissues. And of course, with the single cell type now, we can actually uh, have a resolution at the single cell type. So yes, yeah. basically, in the Human Protein Atlas and the Human Cell Atlas project, we are very much interested in defining these molecular repertories at the protein level, at the transcript level, at the single cell resolution. And after the understanding the, uh, the molecular repertories of individual cell types yeah. with the current knowledge, we think we can actually model the cell, we can actually define the uh, virtual cell models and eventually use all this knowledge for personalized medicine and also for accelerated drug development. Fantastic. It seems like we've been all around. Um, thank you for all of the contributes you make to the global scientific world and thank you so much for joining me here. Thank you so much. Great pleasure to be here. Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. 
The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.